You're listening to ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. Welcome to Heart Matters, where leading cardiology experts explore the latest trends, technologies, and clinical developments in cardiology practice. Your host for Heart Matters is Dr. Jack Lewin, Chief Executive Officer of the American College of Cardiology. The role of specialization in our economy dates back to the 18th century. Fast forward to healthcare in the present day. One application of specialization is the concept of a focused factory, where care providers focus on one or two specific organs or disease processes. We've seen this model take hold in a few areas of medicine, including cardiology, but is the time ripe for an expansion of the focused factory model in healthcare? Our guest is Dr. Regina Herslinger, the Nancy R. McPherson Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School. Welcome, Dr. Herslinger. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. Well, Reggie, I know you have been talking for a number of years about the benefits of a focus factory approach to patients and to society. Could you bring us up to speed on how this concept works in healthcare? Yeah, the idea is to focus on what the patient needs and what the patient needs are not hospitals and doctors and dialysis units and cath labs. What the patient needs is typically an integrated team, particularly for people who suffer from chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease or disabilities like bad backs. The factory part of it is kind of obnoxious, and I meant it to be provocative. The reason I call this concept a focused factory is because it is systematic, organized, transparent, with a lot of feedbacks and incentives to everybody who participates in it, rather than being helter-skelter and happenstance. There is a lot of need for coordination in our healthcare system. Well, you've talked about the advantages of having a focused factory approach or a, a real focus on a disease process in an organized way. How would focus factories reduce costs? Well, they would reduce costs in the way that costs have been reduced throughout the hugely productive U.S. economy. Productivity essentially means you get more for your money. So that's what we'd like in everything we do, including health care. And what these organizations do is they enable us to get more for our money in healthcare by increasing quality. So a good example is the Duke program for congestive heart failure. This program wasn't a bolted on disease management or some pay for performance, I call them, pay for conformance scheme that forces doctors to practice cookie-cutter medicine. This was an idea that the great practitioners at Duke came up with about how to treat seriously ill class 3 and 4 congestive heart failure patients. And they came up with a program that actually increased the visits to cardiologists nearly sixfold. So they didn't reduce medical care. In one year, they reduced costs by 40%. What's interesting is how they did it. They clearly did not do it by restricting the patient's access to medical care, but by increasing access, they made the patients healthier so that they reduced hospital admissions and lengths of stay, and that's how costs drop. This is Economics 101, this is how a focused factory, an integrated team that's created by the providers, by the entrepreneurs themselves, reduces costs by increasing quality. Well, I can see it. You know, 20% of the patients, as you know, generate 80% of health care costs. 5% of the patients, almost half the health care costs. So focusing on those patients in a more effective, organized way should save some money makes a lot of sense. Well, what about examples of where this might even be working out there in places that we could we could point to? Well, they're few and far between, and the reason is very simple, and that is in healthcare under the present reimbursement model, no good deed goes unpunished. 
So what happened to Duke as a result of this exemplary effort? Well, they make most of their money from hospital admissions, and as they reduce the admissions to the hospitals and reduce outlier cases for reimbursement purposes, they lost a ton of money. Now, Duke happens to be a self-insured employer, so by reducing the cost for treating employees with congestive heart failure, it did not lose money. But most healthcare organizations, especially vertically integrated ones, the healthier they make their money, their patients, the more money they lose under the present fragmented healthcare system. Yeah, that's that's perverse, isn't it? The docs who who have adhere to the guidelines ninety five percent of the time make less money for doing that. It's crazy. So, you know, in a normal marketplace, in the normal economy, if you produce a higher quality product at a lower cost, for example, the Toyota and the Honda, you gain market share and you make more money. So even though your prices are lower, you make it up on volume. In healthcare, you can't do that because the marketplace is not competitive. So not only do you not get paid for a total bundle of care for making a car rather than a battery or an axle, but you also can't cut your prices. And even if you could cut your prices, the consumer is insulated from knowing that you've cut your prices. So all the normal economic dynamics that work so well that produce higher quality products at lower prices and make the people who produce them wealthy. All those things don't work in healthcare. Yeah, but you did allude to the fact that, well, you know, heart failure patients, 27% of the time in Medicare, heart failure patients leaving the hospital are back in 30 days. That would save $25,000, dollars to prevent that readmission. So there's, there's some money there to be saved if we focus on providing better quality, as you suggest. And change the payment rates. There you go. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Heart Matters on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. I'm your host, Dr. Jack Lewin. Our guest is Dr. Regina Herslinger, the Nancy R. McPherson Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School. We're discussing the concept of focused factories in medicine today. Well, Reggie, you know, we're talking a lot about improving quality. What about transparency in this whole thing? You know, you've been an advocate of giving the consumer the ability to see where a better value and better quality may be available to them. Well, I have worked with the U.S. Congress to introduce a piece of legislation that creates transparency in health care the same way that the SEC created transparency in the financial markets. The SEC has been a miserable failure as a regulator, but as an organization that sheds light on the financial markets, it has been a beacon that other countries have followed. The American College of Cardiology, through its amazing efforts at transparency, is a model for this kind of SEC And I think this is the one part that will survive in what looks now to be a sadly doomed effort at health care reform by the Obama administration. Well, we're going to keep pushing to make sure something happens there. But I think that bringing some of these ideas on reducing costs by improving quality have got to get on the table. Now, you've been making the case for Focus Factories for a while. Why haven't they been implemented? What can we do in reform to facilitate this? You look at the stakeholders and what is good for them. Is it good for hospitals to have hospital admissions reduced? No. Is it good for physicians to potentially have lower volume of visits? No. So as long as we have a payment system that pays hospitals and doctors separately from each other rather than having one payment rate for a care of a disease or a disability. Hospitals will do what is good for them and doctors will do what is good for them. 
which is not necessarily a system that will bring the highest quality care and the lowest cost. And you add to that insurance companies doing what's good for them, and we are pretty pretty uncoordinated. Well, could a single specialty group like cardiology or orthopedics effectively create a specialty hospital themselves? Should they? I believe the focused factory concept is broader than a specialty hospital. It is about providing everything that is needed for the care of a particular disease. A specialty hospital is likely to be part of a focused factory. So cardiologists, of course, they would create a specialty cardiac hospital and orthopedic surgeons would create a specialty orthopedics hospital. And the reason is that that hospital is for sure going to be much more efficient and provide higher quality care than everything for everybody kind of hospital. As a simple example, the infection rates in a specialty hospital can't help but be lower than the infection rates in an everything for everybody hospital. There's a lot of private capital that would like to invest in specialty hospitals. The concern is that until the payment system gets reformed and you guys are paid for providing the total bundle of care that somebody with CHF of a certain risk class needs, that the specialty hospital component of that bundle is going to get nibbled to death by the general hospitals. Now, the general hospitals make a peculiar kind of argument. They don't say the specialty hospital is worse. How could they say that? It's clearly better. They don't say it's higher cost. How could they say that? It's clearly lower cost. What they say is, is such a strong competitor that it's going to undermine my business. Imagine if we had a computer industry with somebody like Wang or DEC, the two computer companies in Massachusetts that went out of business, would say, look, don't let Apple and Dell and Lenovo compete with me because they're too good. They're going to put me out of business. It's a crazy kind of argument, Jack. Well, Reggie, what about then general hospitals? What's the role for them in the future? How would they fit in in this new environment if we could develop this kind of focus quality and focus factory? Well, clearly there is a need for tertiary care that is beyond the abilities of the specialty hospitals to provide and that's a very important role. The other role for general hospitals would be for general kind of care that is not so specialized for appendectomies or for very prevalent but not high acute kinds of surgical procedures. The focused factories would be comprised of single specialty physician specialties, with affiliated surgical areas, likely specialized hospitals, and then community resources that would help people to help themselves. The general hospital would shrink as a percentage of our health care costs. The pattern of care I'm describing in India, where instead of littering the country with everything for everybody kinds of hospitals, they have a core, which is a general hospital, and then spokes that consist of specialty hospitals. The Indians have the luxury of creating a brand new healthcare system, so they do it the right way rather than trying to justify anachronistic bricks and mortar the way we have to do in the U.S. Very fascinating response, and one that I expected from you. I think it, it leads us toward we need to reform the way we look at hospitals, just like we need to reform health care in general. Reggie, thank you. Uh, this has been a fascinating discussion. We've been learning more about the concept of focused factories in medicine today with Dr. Regina Herzlinger. Dr. Herzlinger, thank you for being our guest. It's been wonderful. My pleasure. You've been listening to Heart Matters on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. For more information on this week's show or to download a podcast of this segment, please visit us at ReachMD.com. Thank you for listening.